First of all, we plug a light in, and then we go and find the fuse box or breaker panel if that's what you have. We either take out the fuse or flip the breaker until we find out when the light goes off. Now the light has went off. We'll take a tester. This I have a little pin. We'll stick the pin in. This is supposed to be the hot. It's a short one. The neutral should be the longer one. And then of course your ground here. Hopefully we don't have any power on the ground. We've got some real trouble. Somebody really wired something up wrong. <clears throat> so what you do is you take your tester, you take it somewhere else and you test for power. You bring it over here and you test to make sure there's no power. Then you take it back over and test that there is power on the other receptacle again. And that's called testing your tester. Make sure your tester works before and after each each test. And here we do the same thing. We'll take it somewhere else, we'll test voltage, we'll come over here and we'll test that there's no voltage. Make sure you get in good and wiggle it around. You see I've got zero. Because some of these plugs are wore out and they don't make good contact. And then you take it again over the other spot and test to make sure you read power again. And that's the issue, I've got a flat screwdriver a bit for my drill. Now if you look at how your wires are wired, it's always black on brass, white on silver. You see the side of silver where the white is. Over here is your brass colored screw. These are pressed in. I will say I hate pressed in, but they're perfectly legal in a lot of states. So in order to get these off, basically I have to cut them. They will not pull back out, except on a rare occasion. Now if you can see this, you might be able to figure out how old this wire is. The ground is smaller than the rest of the wire. But then the house was built in the 60s. I don't know when it was wired. Probably in the 60s. Now where I live, it is perfectly legal to wire your own house after you're already living in it without a license. In some states, you, know, you just have to check the code because I can't account for every state. Now where I said I hate press in, this will not press in. These are for 14 gauge wire and I hate using 14 gauge wire for electrical outlets. 14 gauge is fine for lights, but for electrical outlets, you want to stick with 20 gauge. This is a 15 amp uh, receptacle. This 14 gauge is 15 amp wire. 20 gauge is 20 amp wire. So we'll skin these just a little further. And uh, we'll use a little hole here. I can. Uh, also use needle nose pliers, stick the wire in, bend it over, and then I'll hook right on the screw. If you plug in an 1850 watt hair dryer, you're over current on your receptacle and on your wire if you're using 14 gauge wire. You're also over current on your breaker because it's going to be a 15 amp breaker or 15 amp fuse. Now I like to put in the ground first. That's another requirement which one you put in first but it's just the way I like to do it. When you put your screw on you want to make sure the screw when it tightens it pulls the wire in. If it pushes the wire out it's the wrong way. Always make sure it pulls the wire in. And again, white on silver. It should hook right over. You can use your screwdriver to manipulate it in place if you need to. squeeze it together.
also use your pliers to turn it around the right direction. I'll use a drill to put it back in its Phillips screw. Make sure our wires all go in right, bend them over. We'll put our wall plate on. If your wall plate doesn't look straight, you can take and push your screwdriver in and push it over. And tighten it up. If you still think it looks straight, move it over just a little. See how that looks. Move it around until you think it looks good. <laughs> 